This is probably one of the greatest sounds to wake up to. If I'm being honest. Good afternoon probably for you. We're on our way to the exhaust shop to have this dangly exhaust fixed, welded, and new hangers put in place. Hopefully they can get us all fixed up over there so we don't have to deal with this anymore and it can be 100% solid where it needs to be and done. Stay tuned. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Long story short, let me kind of fill you guys in on everything that's gone down. So we did pick up the red truck from getting the exhaust fixed. It's perfect now, no more hanging exhaust. The hangers are solid and they put like six of them on there and it's not going anywhere. It's welded, little spot welds and some spots on the exhaust to make sure that it's not gonna rotate and twist so everything's perfect, good to go. We did also drop the truck off for an alignment so that's getting done right now. When you start braking the truck, it kind of pulls back and forth a little bit and I think it's because the, um, I think you said the wheel has a little bit of a tilt to it um, because it's just, hasn't been aligned in a long time. Oh yeah, I looked at a couple trucks. I looked at a first gen and a second gen, both at the same lot that I bought the red truck at originally, the regular cab, the maroon truck, and the first gen's pretty rough. The red truck, the body's clean, but the frame is a little crusty in certain spots. Like it's just, not like holes, it's not like you're gonna poke your hole and poke you know, a hole through the frame. Not, not that kind of crust. I'm talking like, it's a little bit more surface rusty than like the red truck was. So like you can brush your hand on certain spots and you'll have little flakes of rust kind of flake off in certain areas. But it's not bad, it's not like, oh my goodness, it's Swiss cheese, you know, run away. But it's just a little rustier on the frame than I'd like, ideally. So, I don't know, it, it can all be worked, it can all happen, it can all get put in place and worked on and turn into an amazing, beautiful truck. But I just don't know how far I wanna go with that. And then in terms of like the first gen, the thing that sucks is it's got a dents in the door, dents in the fender, interior is just gone, there's no interior, but it's rust free. So I'm like, oh well great, you know what I mean? So it makes it tough. I don't know, what do you guys think? First gen full restoration, or another second gen, or a 7.3, if I can find one. What do you guys vote? Let me know down in the comment section below. Also, if you guys wanna win that regular cab, the maroon truck with five, $1,000 cash or five for five deals on right now. Every $5 you spend gets you five automatic entries to win that truck plus $5,000 cash. Next day, next part of the video, we are actually here with the father and he just cleaned, he just cleaned his truck up, this, this other truck up today. It's gonna be starting up. You had a battery, you had a problem with the other day, right? No. I thought you had to jump it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It cranked over pretty good though. It almost started on a weak battery. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, give, her, give her a little throttle. Give her a little <laughs> throttle. Yeah, just a little bit of throttle. Just like hardly touch the throttle down a little bit when you feel pressure. Oh, it almost started too, dang it. Oh, she, she, she almost cranked. Because when I ran it the other day, it didn't run very long. It ran for about 10 minutes, so, I mean, that's why it's dead. But he's gonna be loading up some square bales on this, and what we actually did was just filled up the airbags. I don't know how much pressure's in them, but it lifted the rear end up about another two and a half inches. How much do you think those three bales are gonna weigh, 1,800 plus? Uh, they roughly, I think, are around 750 each. So, so it'll be 1,500 for two. Yeah. So 1800 plus, I mean 2000-ish. Oh yeah, it'll be yeah. a little over 2000. A little over 2000 pounds, so we're gonna see how she handles it. Okay, here we go again.
fell down. Still doing, still doing good. We'll see how it does with two now. So we thought it was going to fit three wide. It wouldn't. So ordinarily you could fit three if you were flipping the bales like long ways along the back, stacking them down. But for unloading purposes, it's kind of a pain. So we're just going to do a, like this so that he can unload him easier with a bobcat because I don't know if he'll be able to reach all the way to the back of the flatbed if we did him the other way around. That's a big load right there. <laughs> Still not even touching, look. It's all on the bags. Not even squatting. Not even squatting. I wouldn't do one more. I wouldn't do that. I say we strap her down. Okay, so we got Big Blue all fired up. We've got the little bear with us. He's gonna have some fun. I just gotta film a video and I'll be over here for like 15 minutes at the property. So if you know, he can run around and run laps around the yard outside, since he doesn't really have much room to do that here with all the houses and stuff. Um, so without getting in somebody's yard. So we're gonna go and film this video here and I've got some things I wanna explain to you guys and it, it'll just help a lot of things make sense. You ready bud? You ready to get out? I'm gonna let him out of here. There you go. You're good. Okay, so let's kind of go down through the whole run through on the giveaway between this truck and Frosty and what the holdup was with the winner selection process, finding out who it was, which truck they picked and all this other stuff because there's probably a lot of people wondering, you know, you said the winner was going to be drawn one week after, which they were, and we're going to go through that whole situation. Why didn't we find out until almost two weeks after the end of that giveaway? So let me kind of go through that the whole deal right now. One week after the giveaway, it was actually a Tuesday for the Loud and Proud Diesel giveaway number 11. We had a winner drawn. The winner, I believe his name was Austin out of Utah. So he was drawn, he was contacted by the attorney at the sweepstakes administration that deals with the third party drawing and all that stuff. He runs that whole side of things. So it's, you know, he's unrelated to the business. He has no say in who gets drawn. You know, I don't have any say in who gets drawn. There is no bias drawing. There is no like science to it. it's like they go through and there's just a random winner drawn i don't know how they do it whether it's literally like a draw from a hat just a random person out of the system electronic you know random drawing through a computer program i have no idea but let's just say this so there was a winner drawn he was out of utah essentially right after the phone call my attorney emailed me said hey we contacted a winner he said he wants to take the 2015 off your hands. I said, okay, great, you know, let me know when I can proceed with contacting him. He said, okay. Another day goes by, he said, any updates? He said, no updates yet, I'm still waiting to hear from him. Another day goes by, he said, okay, so he's skeptical about filling out the tax information, putting his social security down and all this other stuff, which for the record, when you win one of our giveaway trucks, this is something you have to do, look at this dog. This is something you have to do no matter whose giveaway it is. If they are legally running a giveaway that's 100% legit, you have to fill out a 1099 no matter where you live in the USA. If you're from Canada, I don't know how that works, but if you're in the USA, you have to fill out a 1099. That has to be reported legally. That's just how it works. Like if I get a giant paycheck, even if I didn't go work for it, or even if it wasn't at my job, if somebody handed me a big check, Technically, I still have to pay a tax on that. That's just how it works. But all I'm saying is, he didn't want to fill out the information, he didn't want to fill out with the social, he didn't want to fill out the tax document. And so essentially on day four or five, on waiting for that response, we get an email that says, I appreciate the opportunity, however, I do not want to claim the truck. You can choose the next person in line. Thank you so much for your time. And it was all like exclamation points and basically like on a good note. I don't know if there's more reasons to that other than he just didn't want to hand out his information. I don't know the guy's background. I don't know who he is. I don't know anything about the guy. All I know is he was skeptical and he just said, you know, thanks for the opportunity. Pass the truck along to somebody else who wants it. All that being said, we do have, you know, email proof of that, him sending it in. I'll leave that right here. His email to us saying, pass the prize along essentially. 
you know, thanks for the opportunity. He drew somebody else, and this is Jacob Lee from Georgia. Jacob Lee from Georgia, he was drawn, and then Jacob was, of course, super excited right away. He didn't hesitate, and he was instantly like, I want the 96 and five grand. That's the truck I want. I want the 38s. Like, he knew what he wanted pretty much by the day after he had his paperwork submitted and filled everything out, and that's just, it's part of the legal process. That's how it works. Every single winner has to do this. And if he was concerned about traveling, that's the other thing, because Utah's, it's a pretty far distance. We pay for the traveling up to a thousand dollars which would cover all of his travel even if he took a plane out drove the truck back you know whatever the case may be we cover those bills you know what i mean up to a grand we cover which a grand can get you this truck no matter where you live in the usa it should cover it you know what i'm saying um there's some way to get get the truck there for a grand and you know we'll pay for that that's where we're at now and he's going to be up here probably within the next week ish to pick up the 96 frosty with the 38s on it so all that being said and i know there's probably people asking well where's frosty at Frosty, the truck was done, and so we picked it up. We actually took it to a shop to have, you know, the brakes gone through on it as well as some other, you know, steering components, and the fuel gauge wasn't working, so we had a new sending unit going in it. So, all I mean, we're literally replacing almost everything on that truck. Like, it's nuts. I mean, a lot of that stuff is like, okay, well, the truck runs fine, but I want somebody to be able to know how much fuel they have in their tank. So, yes, we're going to fix that. I'd rather have the brakes replaced brand new for somebody that's going to be driving a truck with 38s on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want somebody to have a brake problem. So, all that's being done right now is just safety precautions, preventable maintenance, and stuff like that. That's just kind of something that we like to do. The winner of the truck is Jacob Lee from Georgia for the 9612 valve high speed with the $5,000 cash. But here's one thing that you have to understand and I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I have been scammed before so I know where he's coming from. So I don't want anybody in the comments being like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with the guy? What an idiot, he should have taken the truck, blah, blah, blah. Think about this though. You can totally understand. I can try to get a hold of him too and like, hey man, I'm like, this is not a scam, this is not a joke. Like this is a real thing, you really did win. And he wouldn't answer my text or anything. So I'm like, I mean, I don't know what to, I don't know what else to do. I've been scammed before too, big time. But it was like big time scam. Like I remember, it was probably a little over a year ago. I was getting a call, you know, and they were saying, yeah, this is, you know, so and so from PayPal, letting you know that your account's been compromised and that, you know, you're losing more money than just like transaction fees. And we're trying to figure out why you're losing money out of your accounts and stuff that you don't even realize and all this other stuff. And I have so much, you know, transaction stuff through PayPal just because my entire website is linked through PayPal as a payment provider and I was like oh no well next thing you know we're trying to fix this problem next day I look at my bank account and I'm missing over ten thousand dollars and I had to basically reset up account stuff and all this crap because I literally been scammed out of ten grand overnight gone and there's nothing that they could do about it I didn't get reimbursed a dollar it doesn't matter if it was a hundred bucks five hundred bucks a thousand bucks it doesn't matter who you are how much it is it sucks I was kind of like okay you know like I understand where he's coming from this kind of stuff is a real problem nowadays especially I would be skeptical too but I can understand where he's coming from this just kind of sucks when you know it's not a scam on your end because you know who you are you know what you're doing you know the whole process is legit and you paid all this money to make it legal and all this you know whatever and there's still people that are kind of skeptical just because like they're entering to win but once they do win they don't think it's real and this is one guy that actually didn't think it was real to an extreme to where he did not pass out any information it just kind of sucks when you know what you do is legit and somebody else is still kind of like concerned but then again like i said i've been in a situation if somebody called me right now and said hey yeah so all this other stuff we need you to sign this and fill this out with your personal information and your social security number and all this other stuff i'd be like hmm I'd forward that to somebody that I know who works in the legal world and be like, should I be concerned about this or not? And I'd be like, not wanting to fill it out right away either, you know? Nothing you can really do. I mean, we did our due diligence. We got a hold of the guy. I tried to get a hold of the guy, you know, try to convince him everything's okay. You know, it's, it's all legit, but he declined the prize. He said, no, I appreciate the opportunity. However, like I'm gonna have to, you know, sit out on this and uh, you can give the truck to somebody else and that's fine, you know? What can you do? That's kind of where we're at. But anyways, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Just wanted to clear that all up. Congratulations though to Jacob Lee on winning your nice 1996 five-speed 12 out with $5,000. Super happy for you, man. And if you guys haven't done so yet, enter to win our other 90 96 five speed actually no it's a 95 five speed manual with five thousand dollars cash because right now every five dollars it's five entries to win so if you want to get entered last 14 days are here and then that giveaway will be gone thank you guys so much i'll catch you in the next video peace